welcome to the Col de Turini, the legendary rally road here in southern France in the Alps. It's on 1,500 meters height. The clouds are coming in at the moment. Legendary road here. But we are here for celebrating 40 years of Audi Quattro. What we here see is this, uh, different Audi models with Quattro drive. This is the first one, the, the Ur Audi Quattro, the first, really first one. They all have Quattro drive and they all have five cylinder engines. The five cylinder engine was born out of necessity in the 1970s, but then it quickly became a famous Audi feature. So, Mr. Witt, uh, more than 40 years ago, Audi came out with a five-cylinder engine. Why did they decide for, for such an unusual construction, five-cylinder? Basically, it's right in the middle between four and six cylinders. Um, Audi had the intention to get a little bit more on the upper class of, of cars, to make it a little bit faster, a, bit, a little bit more convenient. But the problem was that if you um, put in a six-cylinder engine into the engine compartment, it wouldn't fit to what was planned mm -hmm. into the cars. It was just a package reason to, try to choose the five-cylinder engine into a future coming car, like the Audi 100, as you see it in the Audi 200 okay. version behind us. And um, the other reason was, of course, that um, it was easier to machine j such a five-cylinder engine on the production plant um, instead of having a V6 or a six-cylinder engine um, on the production line. Okay. In addition to the five-cylinder engine, Audi had another unique selling point in the early 1980s, the Quattro drive system, which has provided traction to generations of Audis ever since. Audi proudly launched it with a massive advertising campaign. Dem Allradgetriebenen Quattro zeigt Audi, welche Möglichkeiten technischer Weiterentwicklung auch im Automobilbau von heute gegeben sind. Audi, Vorsprung durch Technik. The Quattro drive system seriously boosted Audi's motorsports credentials. Advertising gags, such as the drive up the ski jump, as well as sporting feats, such as Walter Ruhl's sensational victory at Pikes Peak, made the Quattro the talk of the town. Sein Fahrer als Ruhl geht diesen Berg weltmeisterhaft an. So etwas haben die Zuschauer hier noch nicht gesehen. Im letzten Jahr haben sie ihrem Cowboy Barbie Anza hier auf dem Audi zugejubelt. Aber jetzt sehen sie eine Fahrtweise, die aus Europa kommt. Spitzenklasse. Another one of Audi's star drivers was Stig Blomqvist. The Swede won the World Rally Championship in 1984 at the wheel of an Audi Sport Quattro. So Stig, really nice to meet you here. And with your car from the 80s, your winning rally car, how was that at that time to sit in an Audi? Was this the, the ultimate weapon? Yeah, it was, because I think it was a shock for most of people when they came out with the 4x4 and it was working very well. <laughs> Normal people were saying, okay, it's another try with some kind of Jeep system or something, but they soon know it was something different. And how was it at the beginning uh, with the durability? Did this car last long races and or did they break often? No, 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 it was very reliable. Mm -hmm. So we hardly have any problem really. Okay. That was another thing with the car. Okay. Because if I just take the car I get to Sweden, 82. Mm -hmm. The mechanics was coming up for Swedish rally. They were changing everything on the car. And then I was doing the whole season with just changing brake pads, so that was <laughs> <Brakes. fantastic. laughs> yeah. And uh, what is your first remembrance or your best remembrance here with San Remo rally? No, okay, San Remo was okay, was not one of my favorite because it was so much asphalt and I, that's not for us really who came from the north. But anyway I managed to win here 82 because the car was so good on the gravel so we had such a good lead when we came back here to San Remo around here so it was quite nice and we had okay. a tarmac rally for me. I know you show me how that was on the tarmac with this Audi. Yeah okay. no, it was a bit tricky but okay you will show me I will see. <laughs> yeah I will see now. But to get into a rally car with Stig Rally spec clothing needs to be donned. Fireproof overalls, a balaclava, and a helmet are a must. The 
1.5 cylinder engine delivers around 400 horsepower to the wheels. That's no more than the latest TTRS, but oh, the spectacle. The engine roars, the interior heats up, and the brakes stink. It's wonderful. Oh boy. Riding shotgun with a World Rally champion is a completely unique, although hair-raising experience. Now, this is the future of electric driving of Quattro, the Audi e-tron GT in the RS version. But before we take a closer look, let's have some impressions. After the ride in the rally car, driving the RS e-tron GT, as it's officially called, is like floating on soft clouds. This is the most powerful electric Audi of all time, so its performance and acceleration tower above the 1984 World Championship winning car. The differences could hardly be more stark. So the e tron GT also has a quattro drive. In this case, this means two engines, one at the front axle and one at the rear axle. They have no mechanical connection. They are only connected by the software. So this is a really huge car and it's heavy as well. And to come around the corners here, this, on these narrow roads here in the Alps, these rally roads, Audi put in a rear wheel steering system here so that the rear axle is also a little bit steering and that makes it much more agile. So usually we would now take a look under the hood to show you the engine, where the power comes from, but there is nothing. The engines are clear directly at the axles. You can't see them from, from here if you open the, the hood. And the thing is, together, they have 440 kilowatts of power. This is 600 horsepower. I'm wondering how this will drive. But now indeed we opened the trunk to show you something. Not the front, the front trunk, but this car was developed in a close cooperation with Porsche and we found the proof. Here, this is original Porsche. So, and how is it driving now? I started here my check trip, but to say it at first, these narrow roads here in the French Alps, now Italian Alps here, are too, too narrow. They are too small for, for to see how strong and powerful this car really is. I mean, 600 horsepower. And the peak, if you boost it 650 horsepower, I cannot use them here. So. That's, that's one thing. The other thing is this car is really handy and agile. I mean, it's a 2.5 ton ship. It's really huge, but it's, it feels even on this narrow roads here like a much smaller car. I mean, one reason is the intelligent all wheel drive, which shifts the power from one axle to the other and from one side to the other as well. And the, the rear wheel steering, which makes the car very handy, even in such small curves here. Yeah, this is this is really amazing to drive and to experience how how quick and agile this car is. So also the the damping is is very good. The car is very comfortable. It feels very comfortable because they have a three chamber air suspension put in the most expensive thing you can buy. But at all, I mean, for prices starting from hundred thousand euro, I expect things like this. So to sum it up, this is really, really a spaceship. This is quick, comfortable, but it comes from another world, from an outer space. This is very impressive. And now to compare it to the Audi TT we drove yesterday, what is the difference? Let's, let's say like this, the Audi, when you, when you put the pedal to the metal, you have 
drama. You really have noise, you have drama. This guy is screaming and it's running and everything. And it's, of course, fast. And here in the Audi e-tron GT, it's a totally different experience. If you here put the pedal down, it beams you in milliseconds onto light speed. Absolutely unspectacular, unbelievable fast. It boosts you in another sphere of our galaxies. That's so impressive. So at the end, I would say the Audi TT is more drama. The uh, Audi e-tron GT is more impressive, but I'm waiting for the day when they bring out an Audi TT fully electric. That would be my car. It seems clear what the future holds. The days of the five cylinder are numbered. Audi will stop producing combustion engines from 2035. But for the Quattro Drive, the future is bright because it's now also part of the electric drivetrain.